we'll begin this DevSecOps section by showing how a typical developer would use Fortify. In the demo, we assume you're a Java developer working in IntelliJ, but we also support other languages, IDEs, as well as the command line. Let's start with our real-time static analysis option called Security Assistant, which gives feedback in a spell checker style as you are coding. As an example, I'm going to introduce a hard-coded password here. That's a very important category to catch early on because you don't want these committed to any repository. You see that this font now turns red, uh, that security assistant flagging it. Uh, and if I hover over it, you'll see some more information. And then when I click on details, you'll see even more information. Uh, you see the explanation here, why this is bad, some examples, how to remediate it. Uh, you see references to other standards and the literature. Um, you may also want to run these same styles of inspections on the code that you're not currently writing, but that, for instance, you've recently cloned from a repository. You can do that as well. You would right click uh, and then do a standard IntelliJ uh, code inspection. From an IntelliJ perspective, these are just uh, inspections. So you can also manage them in that same way. So tell IntelliJ what needs to happen, if they are found and whether they are active or not. Uh, these results would then become available here in the Fortify Security Assistant tab, uh, which is also navigable. Uh, and again, you see uh, the vulnerabilities uh, available by hovering over them uh, and clicking on the details. There are some inherent limitations to real-time scanning. It's just computationally uh, in impossible to do full data flow analysis in real time. Uh, for this, you do need a full SAS scan, which is uh, what we're going to show next. In addition to security assistant, I've installed a Fortify analysis and remediation plugin in this IntelliJ. And this allows you to start Fortify SAS scans and work with their results without leaving the IDE. And I'll show this for the on-premise version of Fortify, but we do have similar functionality for Fortify on demand as well. So here I could simply choose analyze project and then it would run with all the default settings, but I'm gonna use the advanced scan dialog instead so I can show a little bit more about what's possible. Uh, the first choice we're getting here is whether we want to do translation and scan locally, meaning here on this workstation, or remotely through Scan Central SAST. Doing it remotely has the benefit that I can offload uh, the scan workload to somewhere else, which is especially interesting if you have very large projects because that scan takes a while. And then by having that done somewhere else, you can more easily continue to work with your workstation in the meantime. We also see the scan configuration in terms of the files to be included, the class path, uh, the Java version. All of that is taken from the IntelliJ project configuration, which you can override as you see fit. As a final check, we see the equivalent command line options here, and then we can start a scan. Before I do, let me start a stopwatch so you can see the duration of this scan in real time. And for reference, this project is 244 files and about 10K lines of code. After the scan is complete, the plugin suggests to upload the results to uh, SSC, which we'll do. It's uploading now, now it's all set. So from here on, there are multiple options that you have to work with results. So you could use the web interface of the Software Security Center, or you could use the standalone audit workbench. But in this demo, we'll stay entirely in the IDE and we'll use the Fortify remediation functionality in IntelliJ. So in this way, uh, IntelliJ acts as a client to Fortify SSC. So the experience is completely collaborative and whatever someone on the server does will also be reflected here. There are 360 issues in total, uh, 49 of them are critical. Uh, you can view them uh, in terms of their Fortify categories, which you could alternatively also, for instance, use the OWASP uh, top 10. Let's switch back to the Fortify categories. To show you what kind of information we're having here, let's pick one of those issues. I'm going to choose a critical uh, SQL injection issue. See that when I click on it, I'm taken to the relevant file and the relevant uh, line of code in that file where the issue is. Um, you would see a short abstract here of what the issue is. Much more detailed information under the details tab. So you see explanation that doesn't assume that you already know what a SQL injection is. So you get this great uh, educational opportunity to developers as well. You get code samples, 
uh, which are context sensitive. So in this case, it's a Java sample because I've scanned Java code, but equivalently I could have gotten a C-sharp example. On the recommendations, you see how to fix this. So in this case, it would recommend a prepared statement. Uh, and you also see the references to the literature and other standards, again, providing that educational content. Uh, going back to the audit pane, uh, an important thing here is that um, we're not just seeing uh, the final line of code, which, which, which is what we call the sync, but we see the entire data flow from where the potentially malicious input enters the program. So in this case, a spring web request parameter through all the assignments and invocations until it ends up there, which is great for both uh, verifying that this issue is real, as well as for deciding on a potential remediation strategy. Um, what I can also do here is change the analysis. So in this case, the analysis was already set to exploitable by audit assistant, which in this case is reasonable. So there's nothing to change, but I could do that if I wanted to, as well as assign another user. So this is how we offer developers a complete Fortify SaaS collaborative experience fully uh, inside the IDE.